We are almost maxed. Doomsdays. All right. All right. Things are getting serious. Let's see if we can eat those doomsdays up. Uh, Minoc call. Allies in. Get military aid. Oh. Well, I heard some doomsdays up there. Did I get all of them? Okay, no more rockets up there. Just need to get these uh, rockets down and we should be okay. Come on. Oh, that was a good hit. That's a good hit. Doomsday. Two doomsdays, two triples still. Very nice. A lot of these are going to end up bleeding. Bleeding out. Ooh. All right, those are getting the assaults. Uh, we have a lot of mood right now. Let's let them spread out. So there are a couple frag grenades up there. And two doomsdays, both are injured. Two triples that are not injured. So we got to be really careful with those ones. And it's freaking raining. Okay, none of those have rockets. Where you have triple rockets coming up the right side. Oh, there's some of that breach axes. What's crap? Okay, there's the triple. That was close. Oh, I bet he was like really close getting that shot off. <laughs> I misclicked once and actually accidentally had everyone like starting to run towards them instead of a uh, instead of attack. All right, auto door is very important. We get those up. Bold for that. It was a close one. It was a close one. And that misclick could have uh, ended the run for sure. Yeah, auto door speed. Auto door speed time, especially with this uh, kind of onion setup we got going on here. Multiple inner walls. So, uh, it looks like we are done with the research until we get tech prints. Don't need anything else. So, we can turn those off. And as soon as we get those chopped, we'll get the drills over there. And get the, um, get the steel out. Start making, or switching all these in auto doors. It's going to help us a whole lot, a whole lot. We're actually, probably going to need to find a little bit more rice sometime too. Could switch over to hydroponics, which we might do. We have pretty much infinite steel now, so... Hydroponics even more efficient than uh, growing because of the, the fertility than rich soil. And certain crops have a lot higher fertility sensitivity. You can see the stat by clicking on a crop, but rice um, is super sensitive to soil quality. So you can grow rice super quickly. In fact, baseline, if it got planted every single time it was done, or harvested every single time immediately and then replanted and it was never any downtime, it only takes seven plots of hydroponic rice to feed a colonist on simple meals forever. Just like a crazy stat. Probably should need to start making more drugs too so we can uh, get re-allied more quickly. But I mean, we, ha we have, we're limited by how much uh, work we can get done. So, casket baby became a child. All right, casket child, born in a casket. We're gonna need to run power throughout this first layer of outer wall. So let's go ahead and do that. What's the best xenotype of all the natural xenotypes? I don't know. Uh, when I think about it, I th I think about like when I see one of them on a playthrough, which one I am I happiest with getting one of on a playthrough? And that's Genie. But I don't think if you're doing a playthrough of all from one xenotype of the of the baseline xenotypes from biotech, I don't think Genie is probably not, not the best one to do, but I really like finding a couple Genies for crafting. It depends. 
four faraway scans the bina card's ready all right here comes the scary times the thing is we haven't failed a single surgery this would be the one that we really don't want to fail here we go look at that hair on prion look at that he's got like a powdered wig going on powdered brown wig a pretty high chance that succeeds even with this medicine it's a masterwork hospital bed vitals monitor and a level 15 doctor hey try on his hole again we also make lungs now too so i guess i'll go ahead and do that uh let's make toxfire lung times two for the asthmatic uh so normally at this amount of colonists you you can't get refugees because um of the population intent you can sometimes with randy but because of parry we're able to get this so we take this and we uh, do some pawn shopping. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, so these will not betray us either. We might betray them, but these cannot betray us. If you have a refugee group that have children, they won't. They will never betray you. 69 year old masochist, slow learner, careful shooter, delicate crawler, industrious Neanderthal, trigger happy, super immune, 51. I don't really want any of these. Don't really want any of them. I could send them in against the next raid, though. They could pull some doomsdays for us. Shoot them. Yeah, that's what I'm actually thinking about doing. Send the kid out here so we don't get a debuff for killing a child. Major break risk. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that at all. We're coming right for us. We murder those people in entirely in self-defense. Morals in this colony. <laughs> hey, we let the kid live. So like the little seven-year-old or whatever is now. That, that's how you get those quests where the seven-year-olds call in. Please, sir. I've profaned a peace ritual. All right, so we got the legs. We got uh, all that done. So now it's time to start working on it, getting the auto doors done. Oh, I could hang on. How much plastic do you have nearby? Plastic auto doors would be uh, significant improvements you really need a lot of plasteel for other things um we have a lot of plasteel nearby hmm yeah it's great let's do it excuse me kill that deer we're gonna need so much plasteel we'll get uh, a few of these auto doors set up in like the corners so we have them here and there all right so we got a couple places where you can pop out at the north side uh it's a retrade where uh bad side bad side i don't know it was a breach raid because that is the maximum size a breach raid can be my knock let's call some in to help soak who doesn't have a gun oh i grabbed the children Mech, you go inside, you get hit. Actually, you're fine, probably. Uh, you got hit too. Pryon, go over there. Everyone else. Right, please. Pryon, tinned, tinned. Let's see how much they kill. I don't want to get any missed, any more missed shots. Start getting rep. Nice, easy peasy. We lost two pieces of wall. Oh no. Yeah, it's been a while since we did a like higher population, bigger base run. So kind of fun to be doing this again. Been a while. It's been a while. I know people that watch the Winston Waves are like, what? You just did one, but Winston Waves was Winston Waves was over a year ago. So I just just now got it up on YouTube, but good loot or is it worth rating them? Not generally. 
not generally. You're better off doing ancient danger diving if you're if you're doing stuff for loot like that. Going and looting ancient danger is usually just better. Looking for pawns, good stats. You can do that with ancient dangers as well. You open up the caskets, you get ancients or pirates, same thing. And then the bad pawns will even still have gold and components and stuff for you. Enemy base rating is really deployed. Yeah, it is. It really is. Like I said, ain't doing ancient danger diving, as they call it, is just about better in every way. Generally, you show up. Yeah, there's like maybe 10 or so enemies. Sometimes the tribal, you might have like 18, like a couple wooden buildings, and you might get like some potatoes and a couple of components or something like generally just not very much but uh oops uh with ancient dangers you're always guaranteed something in there right oh don't forget the beds you can bring like 12 more beds back home all right let's keep spreading out this art all right uh so let's go ahead and get the last of these doors out and if i did a full stream today and tomorrow of this. We could probably launch the ship. <laughs> it's crazy how much progress this run has made. I wonder how far in are we? Blade time. 18 hours. Oh no. Uh, it's all melee. Okay, never mind. We can just kite them into oblivion. Let's go. I wasn't done with the doors, but it doesn't matter. It's all melee impid, so I gotta make sure they don't get close. That was a tough fight. <sighs> Tricky. All right, we did it, team. Great Mace versus Plasteel Longsword. Which one ends up being better? You're going to love this. The answer is it depends. Just get whichever one you can make. However, generally, especially if your goal is to have a higher chance of getting prisoners than being able to actually tend to them than using the uranium mace is generally better because of how propagation works with blunt weapons it gets like incredibly complex but basically blunt weapons propagate damage if they destroy a part so what does that mean it means if the base hit ends up landing on the hand and it does so much damage that it would destroy the hand the rest of the damage goes into the arm but it's blunt damage, which is a little bit different than the sharp damage of the sword. Sword and knives are going to cause lots more cuts. Um, yeah. They're both very similar. So, like always, the answer is it depends. I generally, if I'm going melee at that point, Geranium Mace is what I kind of prefer. But Plasteel Swords are going to absolutely kill as well. They're going to rip people apart. But yeah, they're... They're the best two melee weapons that you can craft yourself outside of, uh, like, mods and stuff, right? You can't go wrong with either of them. There's some honorable mentions for things like Warhammers, for instance, even Plasteel Knives. Plasteel Knives have such a fast attack speed and cause so many little cuts that it's actually the weapon that I went after on my cheese run. Like, at the end of it, we had almost everyone with Plasteel uh, Knives and a couple of Zeus Hammers. Very close to the same damage output for the mace for stun as well. Yeah. Cost less. Uranium also has less. Yeah, uranium has less use cases also. Like, you're going to need a lot of plasti on your run, especially if you're going into, like, the late game bionics and stuff like that, more so than you are uranium. Uh, even, like, if you're making kill boxes, you know, plasti walls are better because they have more HP than uranium. So, yeah, for all those reasons, I generally, when I go that route, I generally go for uranium maces, but cheap plastic picnic butter knives that's an image is hilarious <laughs> all right we got all those done so i gotta decide whether i'm gonna rip down these inner walls or pull the doors open or do auto doors here i might actually get rid of the double door and just do auto doors at these ones as well so we might still need to come in here and hang out sometime auto doors open really quickly so they're to help us pop in and out kite and kill enemies Let's see how slow it's taking them to go through that door now, watch them go through this set of doors. Like, instant. Okay, so we got uh, we got quite a bit of firepower. 
And we've got Bionic Legs. I think I'm going to start working on getting better helmets. Now, I'm not going to wait on Cataphract Tech Prince. Screw it. So we're going to make um, Green Helmet. I think the only event we haven't had yet in this run is a Center Drop Pirate. And I don't think we've had a Toxic Fallout either. I think we've had everything else now. Lots of mech clusters. We're not that far into the run. Like, we've been, we've been just cruising along. What's the most noticeable difference between higher population aside from firepower? If you're first starting out doing higher population, some of the things that you maybe don't think about right away is just how much like food more people eat, surprisingly. Like you, like it seems like we have a lot of food, right? But like we're overproducing on purpose. If I add a few more colonists and I don't pay attention, you can suddenly go from like having 10,000 surplus to suddenly being like, we're going to starve before the next harvest. So that's one thing you got to keep keep an eye on. Also, lots more opportunities for you know, social fights. If you have someone that's like a misandrist, if you have a small amount of colonists, maybe it's going to cause one or two other ones to be unhappy. But if you have a big colony, it's going to cause lots more unhappiness. There's not much else to it once you know how to set up like work priorities and stuff. Okay, uh, so we are raid capped. So we can also go ahead and start doing shelves and other stuff too. Not really worrying. And let's go ahead and get fire foam poppers down everywhere. What wealth is the raid cap usually on 5%? Around 225 to 250,000, depending on your pawns and combat animals and stuff like that. Ever had trouble getting plasteel from deep scanners? No. I've had trouble where, like, it takes forever to scan them, but generally, if I know I'm going to go late game scanner route, I try to get scanners up really early. So by the time I really need like crap loads of plasteel, we've already discovered some. Point of range scanner. Range scanner lets you pinpoint exactly what you want. So it's typically the better one. It's riskier because you have to go get it, but it's typically better at getting like gold because you can target it. Whereas like gold is really rare. Oh, uh, toxic fallout. I just mentioned that was one of the only events we hadn't had. Uh, also, you can get components, just straight up components with it. You don't have to, uh, you know, get steel and then make the components. You can just search for components that way. Definitely, definitely has its uses. Would you like it to be with a greater interaction between the colony and the outside world? Yeah, so my biggest two wishlist items for RimWorld are performance improvements. It'd be awesome to be able to run like multiple hundred colonist colonies flawlessly at the same time, you know, multi-core support, stuff like that. That would be number one. Outside of that, the second would be to make the world more interesting, more worthwhile to go out into make like raider bases better maybe add some kind of government type bodies like uh, autonomous bases like, if you could set up your own hunting cap camps and things like that like ideology added for the ai where like maybe you set it up and it's going to every season bring you a certain amount of meat but occasionally you'll have an event where it's like hey there's a raiders headed there you're gonna need to go save it if you want that to stay up or whatever Things like that would be really cool. So the the world itself being less bad, <laughs> um, bases of uh, other factions being less bad, all that would be uh, would be cool. Yeah, it'd be really awesome to set up those camps. That'd be pretty cool. Well, yeah, we're talking about the game itself. If the developers had to make, make it so that any future DLC or update didn't already have a mod for it, they would be so like hamstrung that they could do nothing. I remember when Ideology came out and people were complaining about fences being added in 1.3. They're like, why are you guys working on fences? There are already mods for that. It's like, guys, come on. <laughs> and I think, I really wish they would show the stats, but believe it or not, I'm sure most people that buy RimWorlds, especially now with it on console, most people that buy and play RimWorld probably never use mods. It was so annoying when Ideology was announced. There was so, so much of that everywhere. Non-stop people griping about them adding things like, well, this is already in the game. Diplomacy and world rework. Now, if we if we think about what they might add, you can you can think from the developer's point of view. So the developer, especially the creator of it, sees this as a story generator and wants to add things that can cause stories, strife, characters that you like. That's why things like families were added, right? So in that in that regard, what's one of these things? And there can be other things baked into it as well, right? What's something that could cause big stories and history for your colony? 
And I think world stuff and government type stuff is kind of up there. I also think some kind of um, legacy thing, like like the Arco Nexus could have been like a tester for almost like New Game Plus. Some kind of legacy system, you know? Yeah, like historical events. Lots of things like that. I think those kind of things would really allow you to have it. Uh, so what's our next step here? We do this event and um, maybe maybe switch to hydroponics. What have been my ending for biotech? Not sure. I think it. I think a great ending though would have been if they either made an ending that revolved around the Mechanitor or the Sanguifage. So I think going to like a like a mech stronghold would have been kind of cool with like a specific boss, like maybe an immobile boss of some sort that you have to overcome. I don't know. But I'm sure they could have done something. Come on, Toxic Fallout. I got stuff I need to do. It's already past the minimum time. Toxic Fallout can last as little as two and a half days. But... <laughs> 10,000 boom rats. 10,000 raid points. So yeah, we're at raid cap. Yeah, I think water stuff would be cool. It's it's really kind of bizarre. And yes, there's a mod for it. But it's kind of bizarre that RimWorld seems to be like the only indie game without some kind of fishing gimmick at all. <laughs> like in almost every... Almost every game. Not even just indie games. Almost every game... As some kind of fishing mechanic and there's plenty of fishing mods but they hate fishing in games really yeah it depends on how the fishing is I actually like fishing in some games and not so much in other like i love uh i like the fishing in uh in stardew valley for instance but my wife hates it in that game and then she likes it in some other games and i hate it in other games terraria fishing i actually like terraria fish terraria fishing my wife and i both did that a lot oh is the toxic fallout over oh, okay so it lasted what like five days we don't have street lights. That's a weird thing, too, that there hasn't been more types of lights added. Ideology would have been a great time to add that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because the lamps are just like one big light bulb. <laughs> it's so bizarre. It's just one big light bulb in the middle of the floor. I always thought that was weird with uh, with RimWorlds. Everyone wonder what Titan's house looks like. <laughs> fun. Do it again. Was it fun enough? Celebration of war. A tripping hazard too? Yeah, God. Man, that'd be a sucky thing to trip on too. Get this freaking light bulb out here. Shards of glass in your foot. Only one join this time? Wow, that sucks. There must be a god pond then. Nope. They weren't a god pond. <laughs> Not quite, they're just slightly off. Yeah, Anima Stones, that's one reason to raid tribals, to raid enemies. Tribal bases will sometimes have Anima Stones. One of the few reasons. Anima Stones are so much wealth too. They're like 5,000. Might be the highest wealth thing in the game, single thing. I mean, outside of like getting a grand golden statue stuff, but out, out of just like a, an item or whatever that you can just buy. Or, Never heard of them. They're really rare. You mainly see them. So one reason why a lot of people don't see them and why I don't see them very often is usually advise people to anger all tribals because tribals are easier to kill and you get more raiders that way, more tribal raiders. And usually you will see Anima Stone from quest rewards from tribal quests. Didn't need it, so you take it. Yeah, they're really rare and it, it just gives side focus gain Put near the Anima Tree. Uh, it's a stone that offsets, it increases the side focus gain rate, so you put it near the tree. It, it does the same thing as, like, the, um, the nature shrines, only to a higher extent. Uh, we got steel, we are mining more steel up there. We just got a bionic leg on all of our people. Our children are growing up. Everything is, uh, is going okay. So, plan for today is to get this switched over to hydroponics get a few more pawns and survive. And then whatever we can get done from there, we get done. We also just got uh, auto doors everywhere. So, or in the wall, in the outer two sections of the wall. So that's gonna help a whole lot too. And we might even do some in the uh, in the main base. Is this map bigger than a regular map? No, it's 275. 275 is one of the medium sized maps. So it may look bigger because I have camera plus, which allows me to zoom out and show more of the map than you are in the base game. But it's just a 275 map. Yeah. 10,000 point raid. Your steadfast loyalty is uh, attack immediately. Arriving in groups. It is 
Tribals. Got the auto doors now. Friendlies. Uh, welcome back. How many? Oh, okay. Go in. Let's see how this goes. All right. They actually sent us friendlies. Nice. Haven't had any of those in a little while. Here we go. This is not tribals, by the way. I'm not sure why I said it was tribals. Who's going to win? Outlanders or pirates? It's pretty even, actually. There's a lot of low shields going down. You guys not destroy our walls during this? I'm trying to watch the box art battle. I'm trying to watch the box art battle. Uh, there's no, like, doomsdays or triples. Lots of low shields going off. Any inter oh, they're about to get the flank. The pigs are coming around the southeast for the flank. Kaya thinks they have cover. Wilkins, Morris, they're all doing a good job of cover. But then suddenly, pigs from the southeast. Oh, no. They're taking out maze. They have an explosive. Morris take... Oh, I got them. Uh, that little tree's not going to do a lot of work. The north is almost defeated, but I don't know. This flank coming in from the pigs might be pretty brutal. If they don't take out Pulp, he's going to blow them up. A lot of grenades there, but they just don't know how to throw them, apparently. Low shields going off everywhere. Moin getting a great flank there on James. James of the trees, though. Genevieve doesn't know what's going on. It's looking like pigs might actually prevail. The pigs might prevail. Wait. The pigs have lost. Look at all those dots leaving the mat. Excellent, excellent. Cool. And uh, we can save some friendlies here. Get some, uh, get some rep back up. Make sure they don't have any, like, permanent injury. There's nothing I hate worse than, than helping someone. It turns out they don't have a spine, you know? Isn't that the worst? You try to help your allies, and it turns out they can't walk. Um, this one, Kaya. We actually watched the story of Kaya unfold. Let's go, uh, let's go rescue them. And there was just random things going off. Wait, you can't get up and walk off the map because you have a destroyed spine? Oh, this is such an inconvenience for me. Why doesn't anyone ever think of me? There's another one. And uh, we can rescue this. Oh my god, guys. You are lighting yourselves on fire in order to get skulls. You know what? Cancel. Cancel the skull harvest. What? I was looking forward to the skull harvest. Oh my god, the children are on fire. Because he was... Oh my god! Woo! <laughs> oh boy. Hang on, kid. Why are you even hauling stuff? You're not set to haul. He just wanted his own skull. Look at him. Collecting souvenirs. It's weird, though. He did an opportune haul, even though it's not set for hauling. Uh, infestation. Gotta be up there, right? Yep. You guys don't come through that door. Come on. Back. Can I find a better name than child? No, I can't. No, nope. that's all they are. They're just a child. If they somehow manage to survive to adulthood, they'll get a name. Yeah, there was nothing special about this child's birth, so they're just child. This one, on the other hand, was Floor Child, or Florence for short. And this one was born in a casket, so they're Casket Child, you see? But if they reach adulthood, then they'll get names. Uh, never get attached to your children, because they could die in combat. Like, I still haven't named my daughter, you know? That's why I just call her daughter versus everything. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, breach. Retrade. Uh, it's an explosive breach. How many... How many rockets? Oh, the rockets are gone. Okay, never mind. We're good. Alright, let's come out here and flank. No more rockets. Yeah, we're good. So that's the second raid. We got a couple of hits there. Uh, it looks like our armor absorbed most of it. Helmets were good. Oh no, the Ibex.